Good morning, crew. I hope everyone's having a good week. Um, it is freezing here in Boston, and we got some snow, more snow. Crazy. Um, so today I want to talk about um, something that I've noticed lately, as always, in some of the classes I've taken, um, even some of my own classes, trying to remember to do this is always a trick, um, telling our riders what's to come in class. So there's a balance here, right, because we want to make sure that we're not you know, laying out the entire every minute of class, overwhelming them with detail, but we want to make sure that we're telling them what's coming up so they can kind of mentally and physically prepare for class. So um, something that I like to do is at the beginning of the class, I give kind of a very basic like what's to come. So maybe today we have three big hills where you're gonna hit your nine out of 10, however you guys refer to um, RPE or perceived exertion. Um, maybe there's gonna be one giant mountain and a lot of sprinting or a lot of uh, endurance running in the saddle or wh whatever it is. I try to give them a very high level. These are the hard parts of class. This is what's coming. And here's why it's super important. There are a lot of our riders who um, stick to the same person over and over again, which I love, that's great. It's, it's awesome when you have your people, right? But if someone's new to your class, even if they're not new to the studio, if they're new to your class and they don't know what to expect, if you give them that little kind of taste of what's to come before class, it's very comforting for people to be able to plan, okay, I know that these are the big pieces. So once I get through the first one, I have two others and I know exactly what they are and et cetera, et cetera. So we can talk ourselves through whatever's to come if we know what's to come. If you go into class and you make it one of your hardest classes you've ever done and you don't give them a heads up to begin with and they have, you know, giant mountains to climb plus some sprinting and it's, it's really hard class and they didn't know at the beginning, they might go too hard out of the gates and then not be able to finish the class. So there are certain things that we can tell them. We don't have to give our whole terrain, our whole class, whatever you're doing. And if you do choreography, same thing. You don't need to tell them everything that you're gonna be doing, but you can give them a little bit of a heads up. Like here are the hard parts of class. I'll tell you when they come in, and these are the parts that once you get through them, you'll be able to finish. Like we can, we can do this together. Um, so I think it's really important at the beginning of class to give, even if it's a really short little, this is what we're doing, tell them. Um, on top of that, uh, before each song, if it's a song with a complicated drill or even just a drill that's, that's maybe it's easy to explain, but it's tough. Um, for example, I did a in the saddle. It was a five minute, uh, relatively quick. I think it was 115 to 120 RPMs. We stayed at that speed the whole song, which is a struggle for some people. And um, we just did um, some additions of gear throughout it. So it was like a 60 second, every 15 seconds we add and then we take it off, but the whole time trying to maintain that speed. So we did something like that in class. I told them ahead of time before we started the, the drill, right as we got into it, I said, okay, let's find our speed first. We're gonna hold on to this, the whole song. And your challenge is gonna be to add resistance and then take it off at the end and never once lose the speed. That's the challenge. So um, I kind of set it up at the beginning of the song so they knew it was coming. They knew they were gonna be holding that speed for a while. Um, and that way, when they added gear, when they added resistance, they knew not to go so hard that they needed to slow down at the end when they took it off because we were gonna continue at that pace. So that's just one example. Depending on what you're doing in class, you'll know what they need to hear, right? If it was you sitting out there, what would you need to know before going into some sort of drill like that? Hey, Teresa, good morning. Um, so I find that, uh, let me let me go back because not everyone was on the, at the beginning of this. Um, if you <clears throat> tell them at the beginning of class kind of where the hard parts are, what to expect, very high level, you know, three big mountains, um, a bunch of sprints, whatever it is, um, and then telling them before the complicated or the harder songs, what's to come within those songs, how many intervals you're going to hit, how long they are, that sort of thing. Um, I do find it builds a lot of trust with your riders, which is number one, right? Because if they don't trust you, they're not going to come back. That's really important. We build that connection. We build that trust. We let them know, yes, you're going to have a hard class with me, but I'm going to kind of carry you through it the whole way. We're going to do it together. I'll always tell you what's coming and I'll walk you through it. And then you're just going to work really, really hard, right? That's what we want. So that's what I want at least. Um, so I think it's a really helpful thing, especially for new people out there. 
and for everyone, but especially new people, is to get used to kind of giving that heads up before class and before the hard songs, telling people what's coming because most people probably don't know you yet um, and don't know how you teach. So if you give them a little bit about what to expect, they'll feel that trust quicker. Um, so hopefully that made sense. And if you guys have any questions, as always, post them in the comments. Um, and let me know if you guys have ideas for upcoming Herner Happy Hours. I am taking some requests. I've gotten a few messages, so that's where these past few have come from. But don't be afraid to post it in the group. <clears throat> if you want to message me privately, please continue to do that. Um, but I am taking requests, so if you have any, let me know. And um, oh gosh, we're halfway, th almost halfway through December already. I hope you guys are having a good month um, coming up on 2020, which is nuts. Um, for me, it's just another day. I don't know. What it, for some reason, it's very exciting that we're heading into a new decade. But anyways, I hope everyone's having a good kind of crazy holiday time. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, your classes are going good. Guys, one thing I want to say around the holidays, depending on where you live, people travel, it's a little crazy, so don't get down if your classes are doing a little bit slower than normal. I know we think cold weather, if you're in the Northeast like me or North, um, or holiday time, it, it, it's just a little weird, so don't worry about it. Uh, we've been lucky at the studio, but I know last year it was a little quieter because everyone was traveling. So if you're feeling a little weird with your classes, don't stress it, New Year always brings more people. All right, everyone, have a great, great day, and I will see you next week. Bye.